Um, at one point, um, when you were talking um, on another, um, in another talk, at, I think the Buddha gas pump, you were talking with the, the host about um, this God's presence that, you, you know, you, you, you always mention. And I'm thinking, how do I find this place that resides in all beings, even animals and objects? And if I find it in me, so most of the time I can find it in me, but it's really hard for me to think like, let's say, for instance, I have a pen here and to see God's presence in everything in, in, you know, and, and I believe that because Rupert says that's what it is. And Natalie believes that, but I know that's not where, where we're trying to go. And I'm trying to find a place where I can know that and not just believe it because you say it. And it would also interest me why it is important to see everything as that. Okay. Natalie, would you would you agree that everything there is exists? Like you exist. Your computer exists. The pen you just held up exists. Uh, your house exists. The world exists. A molecule, an atom, a galaxy exists. Whatever there is exists. Would you agree? With that? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, existence is the, the common element. It's the shared element in all things. And therefore cannot be limited to any particular thing. Yes? All things have existence in common. So there is a, a property of all things, namely existence, that is not limited to that particular thing. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So existence is not limited to the object. It is unlimited. So what is this unlimited existence that is the shared property of all things? There is something common to all things. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And if it's common to all things, it cannot be limited to any particular thing, therefore it must be unlimited. What is this unlimited existence that is the shared property of all things? I mean, I know the, the answer would be God presence, consciousness, that that's what, what we all share. Um, and I can feel it. I can feel now what what you are saying. I think in New York you were explaining it when you were kind of like dismantling a room and you were taking away the walls and, and the furniture and everything and what remained and everything that remained was space. Yes. So that's also what I would share in common with everything. Natalie, let's try to be more uh, less philosophical and more experiential ab about this. Mm -hmm. uh, would you agree that that being is the essence of yourself? Yes. Tell us about your being. It simply is here. It is present. Yes, I mm -hmm. am. And it doesn't disappear ever. Perfect. It's ever present. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not just present, but ever present. Can you say anything else about it? 
If I were to ask you what shape is it, what would you say? There's no shape. Perfect. What size? There's no size. What gender? No gender. What age? No age. So you answer very confidently and quite rightly to all these questions and I can sense that you're answering from your experience, not just from hearsay. Mm -hmm. So it is your experience that your being has no, no objective qualities to it, no form. That's why it has no gender or age or it has no form, no finite form, yes? Mm -hmm. It's not finite. That's what infinite, no. that's what the word infinite means, not finite. Mm -hmm. So now, tell me, t tell us about, uh, let's say, my being. I'm, I'm a person like you are, mm -hmm. so tell me about my being. Does it have an age? No. A gender, a size, no. a shape? No. So my being is also infinite. Mm -hmm. How many infinite beings can there be? One. Yes. Now tell us about the being of the pen you held up. Does it have a size? No. Oh, the pen, you must, you must admit, the pen, <clears throat> it exists, it is. Mm-hmm. But it's it, it, being. It, it has being or existence. I, I use the word yes. synonymously in this case. So tell us about the being of the pen. Does it have a size or a shape? Not the being, only okay. the pen itself. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but the being. We're we're, we're interested in it, in its being, because mm -hmm. that was your your question was about the being of everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the 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 being of the pen doesn't have a size or or, or a shape or a color or an age. It is also infinite. Mm -hmm. So your question to me, how do I know that being is infinite? How do I know that everyone and everything shares their own being? It's the wrong question, Natalie. It's really for me to ask you. How do you know that being is limited, finite, separate? My answer to your question is simply... The, the reason I assert that being is infinite and shared is it's my experience. Mm -hmm. But you assert that it is temporary, finite, limited, individual, personal. Mm -hmm. But you have no experience of a personal, limited, finite being. You believe that being is personal, limited and finite, but you have no experience of it. So it... The, the idea that being is temporary, finite, personal, is simply, it's a belief. Mm -hmm. An unsubstantiated belief. It contradicts your experience. Well, why, why not stay with the evidence of experience? Now, to go on to your second question, why is it important to know that we share our being with everyone and everything? Because if we believe that every person, every animal and every object has their own individual and discrete being, then we will feel separate from them. And we will be able to behave towards them in ways that we would never want anyone to behave towards us. We can be unkind, cruel, unsympathetic, unjust, untruthful, etc. And when people behave in these ways, it is precisely because, either towards a person or an animal, it is precisely because they feel that their being is separate from the other person or the animal and this enables them to behave in ways 
that they would never tolerate others behaving towards them. In other words, it is it gives light to believe that we are that we do not share our being gives license to injustice, cruelty, unkindness, lack of tolerance, lack of cooperation. And we know what this looks like on a personal level and we know what it looks like on a national or international level. When individuals or groups of people believe that others are others, they are able to behave towards them in ways that we would never want others to behave towards us. So, in other words, the belief that being is temporary, finite and separate is, is, is a recipe for the sense of separation and all the, the, the injustice and the unkindness, the cruelty, the conflict, the hostility that inevitably attends that belief. Conflict, hostility, unkindness, these are the inevitable consequences of the belief that we are individual separate beings. And in relation to the earth, exactly the same goes the belief that the earth is something separate from and other than ourself paves the way for the uh, exploitation, degradation and destruction of the environment. So I hope it is obvious to you why it is necessary, not just necessary, essential, to understand that we share our being with all people, with all animals and with all things. Look around. Uh, I, I, I don't know you well, so I don't know your personal circumstance, but look around in the world. <clears throat> we don't have to look very far to see the, the consequence of a single belief namely that other beings are other beings, that they are separate from us, independent from us. Look, look at the, I don't, need to, I don't need to describe it, the consequence of this belief. So that is why I suggest sometimes that this recognition that we share our being with all people, with all animals and all things must be the foundation of any truly civilized society it must be the foundation upon which a, a society is built the recognition that we sh all people all animals and all things share their being there is a there, there is a a unity of being that underlies the multiplicity and diversity of objects and selves. And it is necessary to see through that multiplicity and to, to feel the, the shared reality behind it and for one's thoughts and feelings and one's activities and relationships in the world to be informed by and an expression of this understanding. Thank you. This was perfect. Perfect. Exactly what I needed. It, it really explains. I just didn't want to, I knew it intellectually, but I needed to know, know it experientially. And yes, yes. The answer for me was that I'm going to sh show up automatically as a kinder, more respectful human being. Yes, if I understand this. Yes, not, and I'm not going to be a kind, respectful human being because that's what I'm supposed exactly. to. Exactly, you can't you can't yes. impose it on yourself. It has to come from the inside. 
-hmm. you have to understand as you already do but also to feel that you share your being with everyone and everything and, and allow that single felt understanding to be the guiding principle of your life it's 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 one understanding it's all the understanding you need in fact i would suggest there are two understanding be being is happiness but let's leave that on one side in terms of your relationships in the world it is the only thing we need to know we share our being with everyone and everything understand that but feel that live your life i don't mean just think about this but but live your life moment by moment <clears throat> as an expression of that understanding 